In this video, we will train GNMT, Google Neural Machine Translation, commonly used for translation workloads, with mixed precision and PyTorch to reduce training time and memory utilization. We will walk you through the process to accomplish this by casting compute-intensive operations from floating point 32 to floating point 16. GNMT is a popular model in neural machine translation applications. NVIDIA GPUs with tensor cores can accelerate the training of this complex model. To start, pull the latest PyTorch container from the NVIDIA GPU cloud using the docker pull command. This container includes all of our example training scripts, and we will be using the training script for the GNMT model. We will use the WMT16 English-German data for training, so we've included the required shell scripts to automate the steps of data downloading and pre-processing, such as tokenization. This can take up to two hours. PyTorch supports mixed precision using FP32 and FP16 data types. Due to the differences in representable ranges between FP32 and FP16, simply converting the model to FP16 can cause gradient underflow or overflow problems. We can avoid these challenges with four steps. Step one, we cast the model, including weights, activations, and gradients from floating point 32 to floating point 16. This single line does this casting operation. Step two, the smaller precision range of FP16 might cause underflow or overflow issues. So we do loss calculation in FP32. In the backward pass, PyTorch will automatically cast gradients back to FP16. In the backward pass, PyTorch will effectively add the inverse of this cast and will cast back to FP16, which means that the weights and gradients are still in FP16. This will help us to maximize the Volta and Turing tensor core usage effectively. Step three. In the backward pass, gradients are small compared to the parameters. If we try to update our parameters with the gradients that are much smaller than the parameters, then we might lose those parameter updates. To compensate, we will maintain the master copy of weights, which includes parameters in FP32. This means to the end of the backward pass, FP16 gradients will be casted to FP32 and added to FP32 master copy weights. In the forward pass, we will cast the weights to FP16 so that the gradient computations remain in FP16. First, we create FP32 master weights. Here, we cast scaled FP16 gradients to FP32. And here, we copy and cast updated FP32 master weights to FP16 copy of weights for the next training iteration. Step four. The last step is loss scaling, which helps avoid the gradient underflow problem and handles potential gradient overflows. Before computing gradients from the FP32 loss, we scale it by multiplying it with the loss scale factor. By doing so, gradients are pushed to larger values and we can safely represent them in FP16. Later, when updating the weights, we can rescale the gradients by dividing them with the same loss scale factor. Here, we are multiplying the loss with the scaling factor and then computing the gradients. Later, we'll rescale the gradients down by simply multiplying them with the inverse of the loss scale factor. Now we are doing dynamic loss scaling, which means that during training, we will change the loss scale factor dynamically based on the epoch loss results. You can train the model using this command. FP16 training is enabled by default. NVIDIA Visual Profiler, or NVProf, helps us to verify if our code is actually using tensor cores. We have already trained this model and observed a great speed up in training time. Let's check the log file for detailed results. Here, we can see the GPU activities. And to verify tensor cores are being called on Volta, look for 884 in the kernel name. Mixed precision training can improve compute performance and also reduce memory bandwidth while maintaining training accuracy. Specifically, we've seen speedups between 2.5x and 3x for GNMT. The accuracy metric, the blue, or bilingual evaluation understudy score, shows that it's the same between full precision training and mixed precision training. When converting your own networks, the following considerations will help you get the most out of tensor cores. 
For convolutions, the hardware will make best use of tensor cores if the channel counts are a multiple of 8. Similarly, in fully connected layers, multiple of 8 matrix dimensions provide the best possibility of leveraging tensor core performance. For more information, please go through our mixed precision training documentation available on docs.nvidia.com.